Good morning to everybody and welcome to our blather this morning where we get to understand and know what's happening in the parishes in our area grouping. Now we start to hear from Kimni. Joshua, what's happening in Kimni? Good morning, Jose. Good morning, everybody. Uh, just a few things to share about what's happening in Kemne. Of course, on Sunday, we'll continue with our regular pattern of Sunday worship at 10 o'clock in the morning. On Monday evenings via Teams, we will have our Bible study, which is ongoing, and anyone interested in joining that is most welcome. And if you'd like to, please be in contact with me, and we can certainly arrange that. Also on Fridays, we're continuing with our children, toddlers, and parents play group of Little Lambs of Kemne at the church center. And the information about that group is posted on the Facebook page for Little Lambs of Kemne. And also I've been asked to uh, intimate again, the operating hours for Loaves and Fishes, our church cafe at the church center. And Loaves and Fishes is currently open uh, 10 to 4 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 10 to 4, and on Friday from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. So please do come by Lowe's and Fishes and enjoy a cuppa and a fine piece. With that shared, I now pass it over to Sheila. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's great to be here. Just a very quick word about a pop-up choir that we're hoping and planning to host on Thursday, the 31st of March, between 10 and 12 in Kemney um, Church. The idea is really to get some willing singers, not even great choir members. The, the only criteria for coming along is if you enjoy music and you're willing to come and help us record some additional music for our joint online Easter service. We've got quite a number of people interested already and quite a number that can't come this time but would very much like to join a future event like this. So if you're able to come, you'd be more than welcome. To get a note of the music, just regular hymns that we're going to be singing, please speak uh, or get in contact with your own minister or drop me an email and we'll certainly make sure that you're in the loop. So that's 10 to 12 in Kemney Church on the 31st, Thursday the 31st. And it's over to Neil. Thank you, Sheila, and hello, everybody. Um, just some notes from Kintor. First of all, uh, this Sunday is our communion service in church. Next Sunday, the 3rd of April, is the, um, is the uh, annual meeting of the congregation directly after worship. And so if you'd like to have uh, copies of our annual um, reports, um, please do contact our church secretary for copies of that. Then our Lenten series of evening services continues every Sunday night at 7 p.m. in the church, and you're very welcome to join us for that. And finally, as we move towards the Easter uh, services at Kintor, we'll be hosting a Passover meal that's on Thursday the 14th, and uh, it, it, it will be, it's not, it, there's no fee, but it will be ticketed because we have limited seating. So if you would like to participate in our Passover meal, it's a liturgical meal, um, but it is a meal. And uh, so you're welcome to join us for that. The whole family are welcome to, to come along to that too. It is family friendly. And if you'd like to have more details about that, please do contact me or your minister. And over to Ewan in Clooney and Molly Musk. Thank you, Neil. And it's great to be able to speak to you all once again. Just a, a few intimations today. I'm actually up at Chapel of Geary conducting worship. So it will be a deep it will be a digital service across at uh, Money Must Church. Next week, the 3rd of April, we will be starting the month of April worshipping in Clooney Church. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock. And following this service, we're going to have a meeting of Clooney Kirk Session to discuss the Presbytery plan. Uh, so that's next Sunday, uh, straight mm -hmm. after worship. We also, during the week, have our usual mainly music group on Tuesday, which is still going great guns, and also our midweek online Lenten study, where I think next week I'm looking at the, the importance of prayer. I think these are all the, the, the information that you need to know just now, and I hand you across to Stella from Laerdaf Chapel of Geary. Thank you and uh, welcome to all. Um, we look forward to having you in, um, in the pulpit this week. Um, 
just a reminder that we follow the odds and evens. So um, the way the months work out that there's two consecutive odd services um, on the 27th and then the 3rd of April in Chapel of Geary. So just a reminder that that's the case. And one of the charities closely associated with Chapel of Geary is the From Famine Relief for the Orphans of Malawi. They're having a daffodil tea on Saturday the 2nd of April at 2 to 4 p.m. in Money Musk Village Hall. So um, if you can go along and help support that, that would be great. Um, and just a note about um, the loaves and fishes. I was there the other day and their bannocks are still one of the best in the area. So <laughs> don't miss out in going there. And now back to Tozy. Thank you. Now we have uh, heard about the announcements let us have time to pray for them and let us uh, pray for the leadership. Now, this is the day that the Lord has made for us. Let us worship together. Calvary, greetings to you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who was crucified on the cross. Thank you for being with us as you watch this video wherever you are watching this service from our call to worship let us thank god for his steadfast love what is impossible for men is possible for god come let us worship as we offer our sacrifice of thanksgiving and share our testimonies to the god of impossibilities. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord of mercy, we thank you for allowing us to feed from your word as your sheep. And you being our shepherd, making sure that we lack nothing and rest in safety. Lord, you lead us where we need to go, making our path as smooth as they can be. Whatever life throws at us, we have no reason to fear, for you are with us and comfort us. We worship you forever, our God. We confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord, for we have known him in our lives and we believe that he is our savior. We are here at this joint service today as a family in Christ. It is our prayer that as we praise you, as we fellowship together, as we share our challenges, as we share our joy, as we share our testimonies be with us, Lord. Feed us with your word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.
Hear the word of God. Our reading for today comes from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Luke chapter 18, reading from verse 18 to verse 30. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, honour your father and mother. All these I have kept since I was a boy, he said. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was very wealthy. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, who then can be saved? Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Peter said to him, we have left all we had to follow you. Truly, I tell you, Jesus said to them, no one who has left home or wife or brothers or sisters or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will fail to receive many times as much in this age and in the age to come eternal life. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, you are the Lord of all things. You are the Lord of all new beginnings. We always need you, Lord. We need you to speak to us. We need you to help us understand what you are saying to us. We need you, Lord, every day, every hour, every minute. Be with us now, Lord. Pour out your spirit on us as we reflect on your word. We pray this to the Father, through the Son, in the power of the Spirit. Amen. Well, as we know, we are now well into the season of Lent. Lent is a special time in the church year. Traditionally, it is a time of deep and somber reflection, reflection on the meaning of faith, the state of the world, the reality of our mortality. And Lent is also traditionally a time of penance. <clears throat> Lent begins with Ash Wednesday, and it runs all the way through Holy Week up until what is known as Holy Saturday, the day before Easter. So we can say, in all honesty, that Lent is our time of deliberate preparation for the good news of Easter. And Lent reminds us that there's a lot of time running up to the good news of Easter. And so we need to spend time reflecting on what comes before the joyous news of Jesus' resurrection. We need to appreciate the narrative event of events in the gospel that leads up to Holy Week. And this brings us to our text, which is one part of this run-up, this text which Sheila read for us a few moments ago. This passage begins with a question, and it, the text tells us it was posed by a rich ruler. The Gospel of Mark, in contrast to Luke, goes further by describing him as a rich young ruler. But in verse 18 of our reading from Luke's Gospel, it begins, the, the rich ruler comes to Jesus and says, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And there it is, the question of all questions. Now, when I read this text, I have this 
mental image of this rich man running up to Jesus, somewhat breathless, longing to ask this question which, which had consumed his waking hours. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, Jesus certainly encountered people in his ministry who asked questions with the intent of tripping him up, of making him look bad, of humiliating him in front of the crowds. But I don't think that's really what we're dealing with here. I think here we're dealing with someone who had no real ulterior motive, no desire to make Jesus look bad. I think the man who posed this question had a genuine desire to be in sync with the kingdom of God. And for all we know, this rich ruler had gone to a succession of teachers, scribes, rabbis, and asked this very question. And so in verse 19, the first part of Jesus' response is quite striking. He replies not with an immediate answer, but he says, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. Now, in saying this, I don't think Jesus was denying his goodness. That would have been a lie. You notice that the man called Jesus good teacher or good rabbi. Now, that's a very flattering title, but it fell short of the mark. By asking, why do you call me good or good teacher? Jesus, I think, was reorienting this rich man to, to his identity to Jesus' identity as the teacher, not one good teacher amongst many, but as the teacher. Now, these days, when we have questions, we like to consult with experts. Or if you're anything like me, you simply go into your internet browser and you check with Google. Now, they didn't have Google back then, but it was much the same in the time of Jesus. It was common practice for pious individuals to seek out the famed teachers of their time for answers to their burning questions. Now, at first, Jesus offered an answer to the rich man's question in keeping with any other rabbi. He directed this rich man back to the Ten Commandments, which stand at the center of the Jewish faith. <clears throat> Jesus said in verse 20, you do, not, you, you do know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. Now, upon hearing this, I wonder if this rich man ah, breathed a sigh of relief. And he said, ah, all these I have kept since my youth. In other words, since he was about 13 years of age, which is the age of accountability in Judaism. But this was not the end of the discussion. In fact, it was far from it. Rather than being satisfied with the rich ruler's answer, rather than signing off on his piety, saying, you're all good, keep it up. Jesus went even deeper in verse 22, when he said, one thing you still lack. Go and sell all that you have. Distribute it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And then you come. And follow me. Now, we need to understand on so many levels how shocking this must have been for the rich ruler and those in earshot to hear this. In saying this, Jesus did something that no other rabbi would have dared to do. Other rabbis would have may have said, go and sell your possessions, give it to the poor and whatnot. But Jesus went even further than that in this verse. He said, after he said to go sell your possessions, he said, then you come and follow me. He didn't say you come and keep following the commandments, but he pointed to himself as the fullness of God's intention, as the true source of salvation. He pointed to himself. No other rabbi would have ever done that. As I said before, I don't think this rich ruler had an ulterior motive when he presented this question to Jesus. By all accounts, he was probably a good man who cared about the law, God's law, who loved God and wanted genuinely to please God. And I think that's what makes him such a relatable character for so many Christians. 
Many Christians who are even remotely serious about their faith have shared this rich ruler's interest and his burning question. How can I inherit eternal life? How can I please God in the here and now? And many of us make good efforts, good faith efforts, to live godly lives. Lives that reflect the commandments mentioned in today's passage. But it's not fully enough. Just like the rich ruler, we can spend our lives trying to please God, trying to measure up. But I think the question will keep nagging us. Am I doing enough? Am I doing enough? <laughs> Am I doing enough with a good and cheerful heart? The answer to the deep question of our faith and our lives is not found really in doing more. It's not found in trying to prove ourselves to meet some impossible standard. If we live that way, we're always going to fall short. Always. There is no way to earn God's favor. Today's text offers us a different approach, a, more, a far more freeing answer. It tells us that the answer to the great question, what must I do to have eternal life? What must I do to be right with God? It's found in trusting Jesus, in really trusting him. Jesus knew that this rich man would never find the peace that he craved until he stopped trying to earn it. And instead, trusting Jesus to give it to him as a free and unmerited gift. Like the rich ruler, we can never do enough to earn God's favor. And like the rich ruler, Jesus also offers us God's free gift of salvation. Like the rich ruler, each of us has things in our lives that seek to hold us back from following Jesus with an undivided heart. What's holding us back? Is it our work? Is it clinging to a certain social status? Is it fear of ridicule? Is it a relationship? Is it our temper? Is it our money? Is it some other way of trying to prove ourselves to God? What's holding us back? In this time, Jesus is calling out to each of us, just like he did to the rich young ruler. He's saying, even now, let go. Let go of those things that are holding you back from me. They're not worth it. He's saying to us now, let go and come and follow me. So as we continue our Lenten journey, may we be ready to take honest stock of our lives. May we be ready to lay aside whatever is holding us back in our faith. May we be ready to follow our true master with renewed and undivided hearts. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, Joyfully, we find in Jesus what it means to be fully human. You give us hope that one day we shall be like him. May all his sisters and brothers know fullness of life and God's glory be seen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for people who are hungry or thirsty, in need of food and drink, for strangers hoping for a welcome for people without proper clothing, for those who are ill at home or in hospital, and for people in prison and all affected by crime. Lord, these are our sisters and brothers too. Help us to do what we can to care and to ensure adequate support. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We look to the day when all of creation will be set free from decay to enter into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We pray for the climate crisis that the world's governments may not falter in their commitment to reduce global temperatures. We pray for the work of charities and faith groups, raising awareness, lobbying governments and garnering support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, who has made it known that you love justice and equity, we pray for a better sharing of the world's resources, for an end to poverty and inequality. We remember the work of Christian aid working with some of the world's poorest communities. You invite us to collaborate with you and our sisters and brothers towards the day when your kingdom is complete and poverty and injustice will be no more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Christ, as your disciples did in Galilee, we bring to you now people we would ask you to bless. In moments of quiet, we pray for them and name them for you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we are in Lent and we journey with Jesus towards the cross, may we ever be aware of his glory. And as we consider that journey, let us join together in the Lord's Prayer, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we'll now sing our last hymn, Purify My Heart. Friends, as we continue our Lenten journey, 
May God help us to let go of anything holding us back from following Jesus. And may we always look to Jesus as our greatest treasure worth any cost. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may this blessing be upon each of us and upon all who we love, this day and forevermore. Amen.